What's going on, everyone? Happy Thursday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully, you have tested negative. If you did test positive during the summer surge of COVID, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Thursday edition of the Pandemic Update for Thursday, July 18th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic pandemic update on all things COVID and any other virus that could be a health threat to you. Let's face it, there are a lot of different viruses out there. COVID's just one of them. There's measles, there's H5N1, there's tuberculosis. There's a lot of different viruses. You need to know what's going on with each and every one of these viruses. And, bet you didn't know this, we're in a big summer wave of COVID right now. And guess what? There's proof of it. The President of the United States, Joe Biden, tested positive for COVID yesterday. It shows that every time you leave your house right now, you are at risk of potentially catching COVID or any other of these viruses that are out there. You need to be informed with what's going on. That's what I do here on my channel at Data Report. I give you daily reports of what's going on with these viruses. Want to stay informed? Subscribe down below. Share these videos with anyone you know. Let them know, hey, there's still someone out there keeping track of all this, and he does videos to update on this every day. Yep, that's me. Give it a thumbs up if you like the video. The more thumbs up we get, the more YouTube will push the content out. Hit that notification bell, and of course, leave your comments down below. Alrighty, we do have a pretty busy news day today. Several different things that I do want to uh, point out to you along the way. And we're going to start off with the latest on President Joe Biden. And this is coming from his doctor, Kevin O'Connor. And the president is still experiencing mild upper respiratory symptoms associated with his recent COVID-19 infection. He continues to receive Paxlovid. He does not have a fever and his vital signs remain normal. He will continue to conduct the business of the American people. With the president's permission, I will continue to provide regular updates as we have done before. So it sounds like he does have symptoms. They're mild upper respiratory symptoms. Let's go through this, though, because there's some things that need to be pointed out that I think are very important because I've seen a lot of medical experts and different news sources say things on X, and it's actually starting to get a little bit of annoying. So, first off, it says he is having upper respiratory symptoms. It would be nice if we know what his blood oxygen level actually was. We don't know what that is at this time. And let's face it, he is battling COVID right now. There's a lot of news agencies that are saying as he recovers from COVID. Folks, he just tested positive for COVID yesterday. You don't recover in just one day. Yes, some people will experience no symptoms, nothing at all, asymptomatic cases, as they're called. But for a lot of people, it takes more than one day to recover from COVID. He just tested positive for COVID yesterday. He's currently battling. See, mild upper respiratory symptoms. He's still experiencing the symptoms. In other words, he's still battling the symptoms. Something else that we need to talk about. He continues to receive Paxlovid. A lot of people are just saying, oh, well, see, Paxlovid, it works, it's fine. Okay, he's the president of the United States. Yes, he's going to have easy access to Paxlovid. Can regular people get Paxlovid? Yes, some can. They do. It happens when you get COVID. But let's face it, there are a lot of people out there that get COVID and their insurance says, no. We're not going to uh, give, give you, we're not going to cover for you to have Paxlovid. Uh, you're not high risk, uh, or whatever the case may be. There's a lot of people that cannot get access to it. Paxlovid is not free, my friends. These treatments, there's a lot of different treatments out there. They're not free. Yes, in some cases you can still get them, but it's not as easy to get them as it was a couple years ago. They made it much harder when they declared the pandemic was over. The pandemic's not over, and if you're lucky enough, you can get some of these treatments, and some people do, but there's a lot of people that do not get these treatments, that need these treatments when they test positive for COVID, and moving on, we'll just have to continue to see the latest updates, if there'll be any more, maybe later today, probably the next update will be again tomorrow. 
we wish nothing but the best for the president and i hope he has a full and speedy recovery keyword i am saying recovery here because yes he will recover but right now he's still experiencing mild upper respiratory symptoms he's battling COVID. i hope he gets through it rather quickly all right moving on here moving cough cases increased sevenfold in virginia since 2023 uh, whooping cough. It's been something we've been talking about quite a bit on this channel lately. We started to talk about it much more this year than we did last year. And it says there have been 251 confirmed or probable cases of pertussis, otherwise known as whooping cough, reported in Virginia so far in 2024. All right, moving on to this. In San Diego County, out in uh, California, they are dealing with with a tuberculosis case at this time. It looks like it is at a care center. So, yep, tuberculosis, it's out there as well. All right, an update on something we brought to you yesterday. A poll had 688 votes. Do you think the 2024 Summer Olympics will turn into a super spreader for COVID and illness? 96.1% said yes. Only 3.9% said no. I would say the large majority of people said, yes, it's going to turn into a super spreader for COVID and illness. And reminder, the reason why I included the word illness, because oftentimes when we see news stories about someone, they don't say COVID. They say dealing with an illness. Sometimes that's the way it comes out. Moving on. In Worcester County, Massachusetts, yes, there is the first case of measles confirmed since 2020 so again worcester county massachusetts first case of measles since 2020 so yeah measles is still out there we've been talking about it a little bit more frequently lately it's starting to pick up the pace once again i thought this was interesting today i want to share this with you and then i'll share a personal experience this is from nyc healthy new york this is New York City. COVID-19 cases have been increasing in New York City. Wearing a mask, and when they say mask, I'm hoping they mean these, the N95 mask. Wearing a mask in crowded indoor settings can help protect you and protect others if you're sick. A high-quality mask, ha ah, such as N95, KN95, or KF94, provides the best protection. And i got to say something. I don't live in New York City, although it's 90 miles away up the New Jersey Turnpike from where I live here in Philly, just outside the city. I was out and about today doing some deliveries, and I happened to notice all of a sudden a lot of people making a very poor attempt, and I do say poor attempt, at masking once again. All suddenly I saw not one, not two, at least about half a dozen people, maybe more. It might have been more suddenly wearing those flimsy useless cloth masks i see the comments on social media. oh masks do nothing it's because of the type of mask you're wearing if you're wearing a loose cloth mask it's not going to do anything you need to be educated you need to upgrade to an n95 mask i think in the future probably maybe within the next week we'll do another video on masking we've done them in the past and i think we'll do one of those little extra morning videos where i talk about masking and importance of masking and my concern is uh, with me seeing more people wearing a cloth mask all of a sudden uh they probably scrambled to find their own old cloth mask they probably didn't have any groceries and they're positive for covid like oh shoot uh we just tested positive for covid we need food uh, uh where's the old cloth mask from the covid days covid never ended but i'm thinking anyone i'm seeing with cloth mask or they're uneducated so either a they have covid or two, they're uneducated. And we need to be educating people on the proper type of mask wearing. Because I see so many people say, masks don't work. Well, no. It does work if you wear the correct type. Moving on now to this from Biobot. Sci-Fi just tweeted this right before I uh, started recording. I saw this pop up on my X feed. And I said, hmm, we need to share this. Take a look at this. Biobot. It's continuing to rise. The national levels have rose once again. And take a look at this. We can go by region. We can see the Midwest had a pretty significant rise now. The Northeast continues its steady pace upward. And the South is also seeing quite the increase. And the West has not peaked yet. The West is still rising. But I do want to draw your attention to something. 
this summer wave is nowhere near as high as the levels were back in the winter. And take a look at the Northeast. The Northeast got hit really hard back in the winter. So it is unlikely that the Northeast will see a wave to the magnitude of what happened back in the winter. Because there probably is, I hate to even say this, there probably is at least some immunity. I know some people don't like using examples of immunity being from infection, but there probably is at least a little bit of immunity just because of how bad the winter wave was in the Northeast. But nonetheless, it's rising in all regions, and the Midwest and the South, especially more so the Midwest now, the Midwest has really picked up the pace. The South basically just continued to increase its pace with uh, rising COVID infections in this summer wave. All right, taking a look at the latest update from the UK, you can see cases have gone up once again, and they reported 3,382 cases this week. That is up by 491. That's up by 17%. Doesn't look like we got an update on health care. I think that's just once a month. 2,797, which was the same number as last week, if I remember correctly. That was up by 61 back then. And when we take a look at the chart, you can see something interesting is going on. April into May, cases were going up. May they peaked, then they dropped going into June, then they went up again, then on the previous update we saw a drop and now they're starting to go up again. Which is why when we take a look at data we see these little notches or little things in there that say, oh this is looking encouraging. Please don't ever let your guard down and think, oh well it looks like the tide's going to turn and things are going to get better. No. COVID can constantly throw curveballs. Look at the UK. Look how many times it was starting to go down. So if you took that seriously and said, oh, well, it's starting to go down. Things are going to be fine now. You let your guard down. Boom. COVID comes out and gets you. You test positive. And take a look here. As you can see on the chart, multiple times it's gone back up. It's done this in the past in the UK. And who knows? Maybe next week we'll see it down again. I hope we do. Moving on. Pollen levels for today, 49% of the country is in low to medium status. And you can see here, there is a lot of yellow in the north, but a lot of greens and even some dark greens in the south and southeast. Taking a look at air qualities today, you're going to see this map look a little bit better than the past few days. A cold front came through the east. Well, it was looking better earlier today. But anywho, the Great Lakes are at least doing better. The I-95 corridor has turned yellow once again. Yikes, that's not good. And southeast, not terrible. The Gulf Coast is actually not doing bad at all. The west, yeah, we have some work to be done. Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, Washington, Oregon, California. Wildfire season, the smoke, it's becoming an issue once again. Taking a look at heat-related illnesses, they do continue to increase in the majority of the United States. There may be some breaks here and there over the next couple of days in the Northeast as things are cooler. Well, slightly cooler, not as humid, I should say. But for the most part, they do continue to increase across much of the country. Want to learn more about the climate and weather? I have another X account where I do that climate data report. And sometimes I do post on my other YouTube account which is also Climate Data Report. Taking a look at Philadelphia yesterday, 887 EMS incidents were reported. Let's take a look at what's going on in Southeast PA in general right now. And a live look in shows 17 EMS incidents right now in Montgomery County. Not one, not two, but three respiratory emergencies. Uh, Springfield Township is reporting a cardiac arrest call right now. That's not good. Cardiac emergency in Pottstown. Another cardiac emergency in Plymouth. Yeah, busy right now. Also, a lot of fall calls at the moment. Hopefully less busy. Well, forget that. I was about to say hopefully less busy in Chester County. But you're seeing here it's lined up with a lot of calls. We're seeing respiratory difficulty a couple times. We're seeing sick person calls, overdoses, back pains, heart problems. Yeah, it's busy today. It's fairly busy for being a day that is uh, cooler. And look at that, as we're doing this, yet another, looks like another respiratory difficulty call just popped up. So that's now makes one, two, three, four respiratory difficulty calls right now in Chester County. And we do know, let's take a look at Southeast Pennsylvania. We do know COVID is starting to increase in the wastewater, Southeast Pennsylvania and Chester County. Look at that. A large increase near Westchester, Pennsylvania, is now being noted. Lehigh Valley is seeing an increase up in Allentown. And Erie, Pennsylvania, in the northwest corner of the state, is seeing an increase. 
And taking a look at Walgreens for this week, 39.2% positivity rate. The prior week was 39.6%. Testing went up big time to 6,767. I hope they continue to see that rise. But we still do note there is some red in the southeast states, some of the Great Lakes. Ohio is in the red. In other words, meaning the positivity rate went up. Positivity rate also went up in Alaska as well, but take a look. They did eight tests versus two tests. They didn't report anything the previous week. But look at Ohio here. Look at this. 46.1% is the current week positivity rate. The prior week was 30.9%. That is up by 15.2%. Total test, 115 versus 94. I hope we get the actual Ohio State numbers tomorrow, or maybe we'll get to report them on Saturday. Tomorrow's variant day. We have a lot of data to talk about tomorrow. Either way, when Ohio comes in, which it's supposed to on Thursdays, I will tweet their number out over on X. Take a look at Canada. High levels of COVID activity, and the viral activity level for flu A is moderate at this time. Uh, let's go to wastewater real quickly. The National Wastewater Scan. Take a look at this. It is continuing to rise here in the United States. A little wonky moving at the end, but overall, the general movement is gradually upward. Yeah, it looks like it may have slowed off a little bit, but again, it's just one of those notches in between where, you know, it may fluctuate a little bit, but the overall trend is upward at this time. Moving on now, all the CDC data that is going to update tomorrow, we'll just give you this real quickly. This is going to change tomorrow. KP.3 leads the way at 24.5%, KP.2, 21.5%, and LB.1 is at 10%. We'll have this, we'll have epidemic status, we'll have ER levels, we'll show you the national one tomorrow, and then Saturday is probably the day that we will should go through all the states like we have been doing on Saturdays. Taking a look at what's going on with New Jersey today. Hospitalizations, 359 hospitalizations have been reported today, 16 people on a ventilator with 70 out of 70 hospitals reporting in the ICU, 38 at this time, discharges, 46. New York State, 2,381 cases reported today. The overall long-term trend going back to May has been upward, and that does continue. This is the highest number of cases they have reported since this wave or surge, whatever you want to call it, has started. Hospitalizations for New York State today is higher than yesterday, 1,061 and 97 people in the ICU. Remember, the peak last year in last summer's wave was 1,711, so we're watching to see if they get past that level. Right now, I'm thinking it probably won't, but eh, we have not peaked yet in New York State, so only time will tell. Colorado for today does report an increase in COVID hospitalizations. Really, all their numbers have gone up today. Currently hospitalized, 123. The positivity rate is now 15.9%, up by 2.6%. That's really starting to get high. Emergency department visits diagnosed with COVID, 1.4%. That's up by 0.3%. Cases reported this week, big increase. 1,772, that's up by 480. So no, Colorado has not peaked yet, but one place that has peaked, and that is Washington State. COVID emergency department visits are down by 5%, weekly hospital admissions down by 19%, and the number of people in the ICU, uh, that did go up by 1 to 22, but the other numbers are down, so eventually that number will drop as well. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Thursday edition of the Pandemic Update. Remember, you can follow me over on X, at COVID Data Report, where I do tweet frequently, day and night, sometimes even 3 o'clock in the morning. Plus, remember, subscribe to my channel down below, give this video a thumbs up, hit that notification bell, share these videos with anyone you know so we can keep more people informed of what's going on, and of course, leave your comments down below. I will see everyone again next time, which will be tomorrow for the Friday edition of the Pandemic Update. Until I see you again tomorrow, stay safe and thanks for watching.